welcome to Mrs Catmore's Phonics. Again this week we're going to be really looking at our common exception words, all the ones that we've learnt so far now, that's all the phase twos, threes and four common exception words, and not just how to read them but how to write them so that we can put them down in our writing really quickly and not have to sit and really think how they're spelt because they are quite tricky some of them. Uh, we're going to be looking at, um, we'll do a bit of buried treasure this week, and we will look at our flashcards, we don't forget our sounds, and of course we'll have our sentences to write as well. We're also going to be looking at making up our own sentences this week a little bit. So I'm going to give you words, can you put them into a sentence? So it's not always just me that's giving you the sentences. So we will start this week's, uh, or today's lesson rather, with our flashcards. Excuse me Ted, Ted says hi, he has missed you all over the weekend. And our first sound, y. Yeah. Uh or oo. Uh. Uh, but usually y. Yeah. Ear. Air. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, oi. I've got to look at it first, oi. Ow. Uh. Or O I E A N The Phase twos B, with our bat first and then the ball. <sighs> ah. I. Oh. Ooh. Usually at the ends of words or the ends of syllables, the beats in a word when you use two of them. Not always, but most of the time by itself and one more phase two one K, usually at the ends of words or the ends of syllables when we use both of them curly curve first followed by the kicking right so we are going to have a go at revisiting writing some of those diagraphs so i think that we will probably start off today with rewriting ch. so pause the video if you need to to have a go at writing ch on your board you can write it lots of times and cover your board or just the once really neatly and nice and small now shrink those down a little bit don't cover your board just because you've got a whole board in front of you a whole piece of paper you don't have to do it massive let's shrink it down like we were going to write all over the page so we've got room for lots of writing so if you're writing ch on your board you would start with the curly cut i'm doing mine quite big but that's so you can see it but you guys don't have to do it this big okay so ch curly cut first then the Remember, if you don't do cursive at school, then don't do it now. You don't want to get used to something that your teacher would rather you didn't do. And then can we have a go at revisiting O, the O sound. How do we make the O diagraph? Two letters making that O sound. O. What comes first? Write it on your board. What's the second letter in the O sound? Pause it if you need to really think about it. But I'm going to do it with you now. It is the O first followed by the letter A, or the letter O and the letter A, if you want to use their names from our alphabet song. So that is the O sound. If you got it right, pat on the back. And the next one, let's revisit, or let's do a trigraph. Let's do the II Captain trigraph. Pause the video now to think about it. There's three letters there you've got to think about. We're going to do it together now. So I trigraph. So I've got to think of three letters making one sound. What are those three letters in I? I remember from the flashcards. 
it, g. And when they're together, or I, G, H, if you want to use their letter names, we have wrote the trigraph I. There we are. Excellent revisiting today. So now we are going to look at writing some of the common exception words, okay? And the first one I want to start with is my. We possibly did write this in a week before. I can't remember if we read it or wrote it, but the more times we do it, the better it will be. Repetitiveness is the best way to learn things, okay? So my, there are two letters in my, and if you want to write them quickly when we're writing, we want to, even though it's tricky, remember how we make it with the tricky letters, okay? So my, have a go at writing on your board my. Pause the video if you want some time to think about it. But with my, the first part is helping you. The second part, I'm gonna give it a jiggly line, is tricking you, okay? So for my, my, the helpful part will be mm, but then the bit making the I sound is not like the I trigraph we just learnt, because remember, it's a tricky word. So if it was all the parts were helping you, it wouldn't really be a tricky word, okay? So how are we gonna make that I part of my? It is with, strangely enough, the letter Y. That's getting a bit confusing with my jiggly line underneath. Let's rub that out so you don't think that's part of your letter Y or Y. And this is my, helping you at the beginning with the M, tricking you with the Y, my. Have a little trace of this. If I bring it closer to the camera, you can pause your screen and trace over it with your fingers if you want to. So you're whooshing up, obviously this is cursive, whooshing up, down, over with one arch, over with another and a flick to finish. Then cursively whooshing into your ear, big smiley mouth, down and follow through with your loop for your yeah, making the I sound, my. You can cover your board with my's if you want to, that would be marvellous. That way you're repeating it and it will stay in your mind. Okay, the next, perhaps we could put my into a sentence actually. Hmm, let's try that. My in a sentence, what do you think, Ted? What sentence could we have my in? Okay, Ted has said, my red scarf is very warm. My red scarf is very warm. That's a nice sentence, Ted. Well done, it does look very warm. And actually today, it's gone very cold. So it'd be nice to have a very warm scarf on, Ted. So that's a nice sentence. My, my red scarf is very warm. Lovely sentence, Teddy. Okay, our next common exception word that I want to have a go at writing is all, all. Okay, we're going to have a go at writing all. Now, part of it is uh, helping you and part of it is being a little bit tricky, okay? So we have this bit here that's a digraph, two letters making one sound is, uh, sorry, it's not the tricky part, it's the helpful part, so excuse me. The tricky part is the first little letter here. Okay, so this might help you write all. Have a go at writing it on your board now. Don't worry if you're not sure, just think. Right, okay, part of it's helping me, part of it's tricking me. A little clue, the first part is tricking you, the first letter. That's why we've got a jiggly line. And the second digraph is helping you. All, all. Okay, so writing all. The tricky part is the letter A, but it's not making an A sound. That was it would be L, L. So it's making an kind of O, O sound really. O, O, O. So it's being tricky. But then the all part here is helping you. It's two of the letter all or letter L, if you want to say its name from the alphabet song. And that is how we write the word all. Let me bring it closer to the screen so you can pause the video and trace it with your finger if you want to. Whoosh up and round like a curly cur. Round but up to the top, meet up with it like that. That's where it goes different to a curly cur. Down and flick. And then your letter L, you just whoosh up come down and flick, whoosh up, come down and flick. Remember, don't do it cursively if you're not used to doing it. Do it the way you would normally do it. Cover your board with the word all. Teddy, can you think of a sentence with all in it? What can you think of, Teddy? He's a bit shy, so he's whispering. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Teddy says he can think of a sentence that says, I love all of my toys. 
I love all of my toys. Nice one, Teddy, you're on form today. Right, you can think of a sentence of your own. You can shout it out to the screen or tell your adult in the room. A sentence that contains the word all. Now we're going to look at the word her. Now her, although in the common exception words, shouldn't really be there. It's really just a high frequency word. High frequency meaning it pops up a lot, it's frequent, it's there a lot in your sentences, but it's not exception. It does go by the rules, all the rules we know now anyway. Okay? Maybe if it was back at phase two, we wouldn't have known the er uh sound, but now we're such clever people, we've learned phase three, we know how to make the er uh sound. Maybe it's a little bit tricky because there are so many er uh sounds, which one do you use? But anyway, we're going to write her, but don't feel put off by her because there are no tricky parts to it. First sound is helping you, and then the digraph is helping you. So have a go now at writing her on your boards. And then we're going to do it together. So her, if it's not tricking you, what can we hear at the beginning? It is at the beginning. And then her, her, her. We've just got to decide which her it is. Okay? If you get it wrong, I'm not fussed at this point, if you get it wrong. If you get one of the er uh sounds, then that to me is great. Because then your teacher would still know what you were trying to write. Because they would see the her and the er uh sound, even if it wasn't quite the right er uh sound. They would be able to read your writing. And you would be able to read it if you came back and looked at it in a few days' time. But I will let you know, and probably you've gone for this one, we will say the er uh way of doing it in her is the e and the r, or the e and the r, if you want to use their names. So I'll bring this closer to the camera. Here is her. You can pause it and run your finger over it if you want to. Whooshing up tall for the down, back up and over with an archway and a flick to finish. Then an e, loop through, and a r, up tall, down, over, and a little flick to finish. Actually, and this is for my class mainly that do cursive, our letter R's or our R's are being very tricky to write, I've noticed on a few videos. So have a watch, let's do one together. I'm going to whoosh up if I'm doing it cursively. Then I come down. So, so far I've whooshed up, come down, and then I go up once more. Then it's over and a little hook to finish. So I'm only actually going up, down, up, and over. Up, down, up, and over. Let's do one more. Up, down, up, and over. Okay, so it's not lots of ups and downs, but just up, down, up, and over. And that's how we do our if we're doing it cursively, okay? So that's her. Cover your board in her if you want to. And then we're going to try and think of a sentence with her in it, okay? A sentence with her in it. Teddy, can you think of one while the guys at home are trying to think of a sentence? You're having trouble, are you, Teddy? You'd rather have someone call out to you at home first. I can't quite hear them though, Teddy, so you'll have to come up with something. He wants to say, I like her hair, it's very pretty. I like her hair, it's very pretty. Thank you, Teddy. You must be talking about mine today. <laughs> right, okay. So that is writing all and my and her. So if we need to ever write them in our literacy or we're writing anything, all my and her. We know which bits are helping us and which bits are tricking us and how to write them. Now, I am going to pop some common exception words down on the table and I want you to point to the right one okay so this is what we're doing today I know you quite like doing them when I spread them out in fours so I'm going to put some out now we're going to start with the um, phase four common exception words the ones we've had <coughs> less <coughs> sorry <coughs> less experience of um, but don't be put off because it's easier to pick one out of four Okay, so there are the four words, four phase four common exception words we've got there. Can you point to the one that says out? Which one says out? Out. Remember, it's the owl part we're not familiar with yet, not until we probably reach year one will we know how to do this owl sound. Out. There is out. And next we have, oh, there's a nice phase two one there. Can you point to what? What? Remember with the w sound in these common exception words, it's made with a w and a h. 
or W and a H together, just making the W sound, okay? What is this one? Looks a bit like what, but it's what. Okay, next one here. Can you point to the one that says do, do? First sound is helping you. There is do. And now can you point to the word me, me? There is me. We've seen me a lot these days, so that's a tricky, um, an easy one rather to work out. Now, can you find the word when? When? Can you point to when on that screen? Oops. Okay. Where is when? There is when. That's that W and the H or the W and the H together, just making that W sound. The one W sound. And which one says R? R. There is R. Could we put R in a sentence? Hmm. Can you think of a sentence to put R into? I think I might do, are you coming to mine for dinner? Are you coming to mine for dinner? Don't get it mixed up with our. Are you coming to our house is much different word. Okay, here we have another four. Can you point to the word to? I'm going to the shops. There it is, there's two. Now let's go with this one. Oh, hello, we know you. Can you point to the word... Let's go with you, since I just said it. You. Helping you at the beginning, tricking you with the ooh part. There is you. Can we make a sentence with you in? What could you say? I think maybe, um, I think you are my best friend. You. There's another four. Look at those. Which one says her? We just wrote it on our board. Which one is her? Not really tricking us at all. There it is. Her. Teddy came up with a sentence for that for us. And then these four. Can you point to the word into? Into. There is into. It's a nice, easy, straightforward one. If you know how to read to, you'll know how to read into. Now, can you point to the one that says he? It's helping you at the beginning. There is he. And can you point to the one that says all? We just wrote it on our boards, didn't we? All. Can you remember what it looks like? There it is, there's all. And Teddy gave us a sentence for all. Now, can you point to she? She. There is she. Can we make a sentence for she? Call one out to the screen. I'm gonna go with she would like a bacon sandwich for breakfast. A lot of my sentences are around food, have you noticed? Right, more four words there. Can you point to they, they? My tongue is poking out at the beginning of they. There is they. And, oh, there's another one. Can you find no, no? There is no helping you at the beginning. Can you find was, was? I always say it looks like was if you blend it. So if you find yourself saying was, then you know it must be was. Here is was. Seem to have lots today. Can you point to B? Where is B? There is B, just that letter E, making an E sound to be tricky. Can you point to go? Go. There is go. G is helping you, but the O is making an O sound. And can you point to my? We wrote it on our boards at the beginning of the lesson. Where is my? I imagine you'll go straight to it now. There is my. Can you find the word we? Where is we? There is we helping you at the beginning. There is. Hmm, can you find me I? There's I. I think we all know I. What can we do? What sentence can we do with I? We're talking about ourselves. Maybe I went for a walk with my dog, I. And can you find have? Remember, they're pretty much they're all helping you, apart from one little letter's having a sneaky holiday. There is have, have and then et is doing nothing. Can you point to the word said? I said you could go out tonight, said. There is said, looks like said, said, but we say said, the A sound is making more of an F sound in that said. Can you find the word the? 
we use the so many times in our reading and writing that I'd imagine you would know it is this one straight away. Nearly done, our pile is almost finished. Can you find the word little? Little, little, most of this is helping you. Just that eh on the end doing very little, <laughs> doing nothing at all. And there's another one. Oh, can you find the word one? Really tricky this one. Starts with the strangest of letters, one. There is one, there it is. The only thing really helping you is the mm sound, one. So that is one, looks like it blends us on it. Can we put one in a sentence? Mm, maybe if we were counting. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And can you find the word were? We were going on our summer holiday, were. Now it's helping you at the beginning and the only one with that sound at the beginning is this one. So were. Remember this is making an er uh sound, which it would normally make if the et eh wasn't there, wouldn't it? The et eh and the r. But that et eh seems to be doing nothing again. Were. Can you find the word like? Remember, like has what's known as a magic E or a split digraph where the E is turning the I into the I sound. So, all I, with its magic E helping it, all I, like. And last four, can you find come? There is come. Can you find some? Remember what come looked like? So, you're looking for some. There is some. Can we put some into a sentence? Can you think of one? I would like some more chewing gum. Some. Got two left here. Which one is so? Oh, it's got to be this one, hasn't it? Which means that this one is what? Yell it out to the camera. It is there. Okay, so you might say, I live there at that house. There. So that was our common exception words. You did a marvellous job with all of those today. Pat yourself on the back for hanging in there and doing all of those. And if you thought of sentences to go with them, excellent. Because your stretch task today is to have a go at writing one of the sentences that you came up with, okay? It could be one that Teddy whispered to me as well if you want to, but I think you could use your own creative imagination excuse me, to come up with a sentence of your own. And if you already have, try and recall it, tell it to your adult, so they can write it down quick themselves as well, so no one forgets it, but they're not gonna show it to you. Then they're gonna read it out to you, and you can have a go at writing it, okay? I want you to really start thinking about the words that you've got to use in your own sentence, how that sentence has got to make sense, so what words you're going to need, and that will probably be a lot of common exception words in between to help it make sense and to make it flow. Um, and I want you to start yeah, thinking of sentences of your own rather than what I'm just telling you to do, which I know you can do now. Now, sometimes your sentences might contain words that have sounds in that we might not yet have learnt, but I don't want you to worry about that. I just want to, you to think about what you can hear and do your best to think of those sounds. Right? So we're not looking for absolutely perfect spelling, just ways that you can think how you can make those sounds from what you already know from your phonics knowledge. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye!